Today I'm gonna to show you a painless way of how to animate a bit of chain moving around with the help of curves. As always, there's going to be a free resource file in the description of this video that you are more than welcome to go and check out, download it for yourself. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, uh, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot and let's get into the video. As I said, we're gonna be looking at curves. So I'm gonna open up my Blender 3.1. I'm using a 2.79 shortcut scheme. Let's start by first defining our chain. So what we'll be doing today is create a chain and then instead of using rigid body physics, we'll just use some curves to animate it. I'm gonna go to my top down view by pressing seven on my numpad, shift a curve, and then add a circle. So I'm gonna use the circle curve to actually form one of the chains. So I'm gonna go into edit mode by pressing tab. And now I just wanna move these vertices on the right and left more towards the center. So I'm pressing G, X and then holding control and scrolling my mouse. So I go into intervals. So zero, one, zero, two. I think at zero, two should be fine. I'm gonna press G, X, do the same on the other side, move it to zero, two. And then maybe I could scale the top to make it a bit less rounded. Again, S, X, and maybe drag it to 1.3. Do the same at the bottom. Maybe I can bring these just a bit closer. So I'm gonna press G, X, move it one notch either side. Some, something like that. Let's say that that's gonna work fine. Now under our little curvy line over here, I'm just gonna go under the geometry option, increase the depth of the bevel. So I get sort of like a chain link, something like that. I wanna make this into a chain. So the way I'm gonna do it is by using arrays. So first of all, I'm gonna create a duplicate of this chain link, shift D to duplicate, R, Y to rotate it by 90 degrees, and then G, Y to move it so that it basically touches the second link so that they can hug really nicely. I'm gonna shift select the last or rather the first link and then press Control J to join them together. And I've done this because now I'm gonna go under my modifier tabs and add the array modifier. Right now, as you can see, it's working on the X axis. So if we want to repeat it on the Y, we just drop this to zero and add Y. However, we need to do it minus one because that's the orientation that we're working currently. So this is how it looks. And basically you can also then start adjusting it so it's almost hugging. You can also go back in edit mode and adjust these guys separately and you can move them around as you wish. This will also move the array sometimes slightly, but you know, this is how you can fine tune your chain. And you can also increase the amount of these by increasing the count. I think a chain like this should be perfectly fine. I wanna press Control A, reset the scale, just in case, Shift A and add a path. So this path is now looking like that. Now, what I would usually suggest when you're working with paths uh, and you're working with the curve modifier, try to work with the path that was originally added. So I'm just gonna scale it on the SX, scale it up by 1.8, Control A to reset the scale. And then I'm gonna select the chain and rotate it on the Z so it matches the rotation of the original path. I'm gonna scale this bad boy down so it's a bit closer to the size of the path that we chose. I wanna keep all of these guys nicely aligned in this origin point right there, right? So now if I want to control the chain with this path, I need to just click on the chain, add modifier, a curve modifier, and with the drop down menu, I can choose the NURBS path. Now, in some cases, it's gonna create this. It's going to slightly deform the object. You can also then again, just try to rescale it. You can also rescale it by choosing S, Shift X, and then moving it back into its original position, S on the X. So you're trying to basically work it into the, the previous form. Pull this back on the X axis like that. And now I can basically grab the path go into edit mode and I can move the path as I wish. And that's gonna move the whole object and move the control. So this is a very good trick usually 
that I use for animating chains that are hanging from the walls super quickly because many times I would just have issues with the physics in Blender. Sometimes physics can go super crazy and if you need just a very, very, very quick fix, usually this is the way. A bonus tip here is how would you animate this? Because you cannot actually go in edit mode and then add a keyframe to the actual path. So what I would suggest in this case is just select the vertex that you want to be moving, press Control H and then hook to new object. What this is going to do is create a hook modifier. And if I exit edit mode and choose this empty, the vertex of that path is now parented to this empty object with a hook. And I can grab that empty and drag it around. But the best part is, for example, I'm going to put a location rotation or just a location and move down the timeline. And let's say I'm going to press GZ, move it up and press I and insert another keyframe. Basically, what I get if I play the animation now is the chain actually moving and animating the path. Super easy and super useful for situations in which you don't necessarily have a lot of time and a lot of processing power to just fill the scene with chains. Another thing you can do for optimization is go back under your little curvy friend over here and reduce the resolution of the bevel and reduce the resolution of your chain as well. Let's say to three or four, something that makes sense, especially if they're not going to be in the center of the frame. Keep it low because that is also going to help optimize your system. Actually, if you turn it to one, these look kind of dope. Maybe if you also drop like a bevel modifier on them, they become this very this super fantasy like chain. I don't know, but fun to try and fun to experiment with and fun to just test out. So yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you have a free resource file available in the description of this video on my Gumroad that you're more than welcome to download and check out for yourself. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful and yeah, try, experiment, have fun with it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.